So we're going to go ahead and call the annual general meeting of the members of the Toy Industry Association to order and, uh, and get started. I'm Carter Keithley. I'm the president of the TIA, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here to this 2012 annual general meeting. Um, this meeting is an opportunity for you who are the owners of the association uh, to hear about where it's headed uh, and to gauge the health of the organization and to determine how you can maximize the value that you get from your membership. So we're very glad you're here. This morning you'll hear from our board chairman, Brian Stockton, reviewing our accomplishments during the past year, from John Gessert, our treasurer, with a financial status report, from our EVP for external affairs, Ed Desmond, about our advocacy, and finally from our incoming chairman, Soren Torp Larson, about his vision for the future. To provide a little, a little perspective uh, before we begin, uh, in this morning's report, I'll quickly review the work of each of the TIA departments uh, that they're doing in support of our mission and six key objectives. And these objectives are set forth in the strategic plan for 2010 to 12, which are shown here. Um, our first priority has been to restore the financial health uh, of the association. Um, followed by augmenting the value of our events and membership, building our advocacy capabilities, and enhancing our governance structure. And the staff work with uh, and for our members to achieve these goals. Um, I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to the senior team who are responsible for leading these initiatives on your behalf. Since we're here at Toy Fair, let me start with our meetings and events department, which is headed by Marion Bossard. Uh, Marion was an events manager with a major for-profit show or organizer before she came to TIA, and she has nearly 20 years of experience in, in managing ma major events. Um, TIA's Toy Fair is 45, number 45 of the 100 largest trade shows in America, and last year, believe it or not, our show was named the greatest show on earth. I thought that was the circus, but it's the greatest show on earth by Trade Show Executive Magazine's Gold 100 Group, which is really quite an honor because that's a, an honor bestowed by the most successful show organizers in the nation. Marion's department is responsible for generating 70 percent of our annual revenues through Toy Fair and Fall Toy Preview, and the net revenue of these events, of course, help pay for everything else we do. Marion and her team also lead development of TIA's largest educational and networking event, PlayCon, the international, uh, that's the international conference uh, of play professionals, all of you folks, basically. We get about, about 200 people there, and we hope that you'll come you know, this coming May. Um, she manages a first-rate staff of 12 people, including three account executives who also support the membership mm -hmm. department. Um, and I should tell you that one member of her staff is our longest tenured employee, uh, over 24 years of service at uh, TIA, uh, Ava Slepikov. So, uh, we have some great, uh, great talent on our, on our team. Um, for many of you, of course, Toy Fair and Fall Toy Preview are the central marketplaces for your business, so it's our responsibility to provide you with the most convenient, cost-efficient, and buyer-friendly events possible, uh, and Marion and her staff know that their responsibility is to maximize the value of the events for you. Uh, and so I hope if you're a buyer or an exhibitor, please get to know Marion and her team. Our membership department is headed by Jean Butler, who also wears another hat as executive director of our Toy Industry Foundation. Jean's been with TIA for eight years, and she has four people in her, her department, plus she shares those three account executives with Marion. Jean has dramatically increased membership uh, in her time with TIA by nearly 55 percent and dues by over 100 percent. Um, and, of course, the dues revenues are 25 percent of our total revenues, and so they're crucial for sustaining our missions. Jean has created and implemented new benefits that add value to your membership and jumped headlong into fulfilling the potential for new retail and licensing and rep members uh, that was allowed by our bylaws last year. Jean will be reaching out to all the TIA members in mid-year with a comprehensive survey to find out how we can serve you better, and I really hope that you will take the opportunity to respond to the survey and, and tell us how we can help you prosper. Um, Jean's been a primary force also in fulfilling the vision that we had for the Toy Industry Foundation when it was formed about 10 years ago. The foundation now has focus, purpose, and drive, and believe it or not, it provided toys to more than 700,000 children in need alone just last year. So it really is a tremendous success. Um, I mean, the work of the foundation is one of these great stories that we can tell to media and regulators and to consumers about the toy industry. 
Um, our strategic communications department is headed by Stacy Leishner, who joined TIA in 2009. Now, Stacy was formerly the head of communications for the American National Standards Institute, and we worked closely with him when he was there. So we knew he was a talented guy when it comes to issue-related communications. And so in addition to professionalizing our messages on issues, Stacy is responsible for enhancing the information and education services we deliver to TIA members. Uh, and TIA's Toy News Tuesday, TNT as we call it, is a great example of our commitment to keeping you informed. Uh, but an added benefit has been Stacy's talent for organizing fun and exciting programs like the Hall of Fame and the Toy of the Year Awards. And he's added new sparkle to our programs and events, and I hope all of you agree that uh, the, the event we had Saturday night had just that new sparkle that, uh, that we've been hoping for. Um, his department consists of seven people, including PR staff, writers, designers, and digital services, and they package and tell a great story about our industry's creativity, safety record, industry ethics, and philanthropy. We don't have an advertising budget, so we have to rely on the integrity and appeal of our messages and our relations with media to get placement. And I'm pleased to report that uh, we've had tr some tremendous growth with our media penetration. Um, one of the most valuable benefits of TIA membership is the opportunity for your company to get visibility with uh, the help of Stacy's department for your company and your toys. So I urge you, when Stacy's department puts out a call uh, for stories and toys, I urge you to respond uh, so that they can help give you that kind of visibility. Now, our external affairs department is headed by Ed Desmond, who came with us in 2008. Ed's an attorney by training, served as a legislative counsel on Capitol Hill, and has over 20 years of experience in building and managing advocacy programs for corporations and trade associations. Uh, he's built a powerful advocacy team for TIA to take our messages directly to state, federal, and international authorities on behalf of the toy industry. Um, you know, one of the great lessons of the crises of 2007 and 2008 was that we can't afford to enter the legislative and regulatory arenas at the last minute when something goes wrong. Um, we have to be present year after year telling the story of the industry's responsible actions to protect children. The federal amendments adopted last August to cure problems with the 2008 legislation uh, were a result in large part of three years of behind-the-scenes work by Ed and his team. You know, they're constantly calling on legislators who have a distorted view of our industry to make sure they know the facts. Ed works closely with the communications department, Stacy's department, to assure that the right messages are being delivered to the media, to the legislators, and to NGOs. And he also coordinates with the membership department to provide information and education to members about regulatory compliance. TIA also has two of the most experienced toy safety standards professionals on our staff looking out for your interests. Our Vice President for Standards and Regulatory Affairs, Joan Lawrence, is Chairman of the ASTM Toy Safety Subcommittee and has been with TIA for nearly 20 years. Al Kaufman, who joined us just last year as SVP for Technical Affairs, is one of the most respected toy technology authorities in our industry. He was recently elected a member of the Executive Committee of the ASTM Consumer Products Committee and just last week was appointed by the American National Standards Institute as one of two of ANSI's experts working on the revision of the ISO Guide 50, which is the Guidelines for, for Children's Safety. And I must also mention the extraordinary support provided by our outside legal counsel, Rick Locker. Rick is second-generation legal counsel to TIA, having joined his father's uh, firm in uh, 1985. And believe it or not, Aaron, his father, actually became a counsel to TIA in 1955. Um, so Rick's value to the association goes well beyond legal advice. Uh, in addition to helping us craft sound policies and strategies in regulatory matters, he's a trusted advisor to the board, and we consider him part of the family. So we're fortunate to have some tremendous in-house assets to protect your companies from unwarranted regulatory interference. But legislators often want to hear directly from toy companies. And so when Ed's department contacts you to support our advocacy efforts, uh, I hope you'll respond. Finally, our finance and operations department is headed by Paul Vitale. Paul's a CPA with over 25 years of experience in both for-profit and not-for-profit organizations. He spent 10 years in public accounting with Arthur Anderson, and prior to joining TIA in 2007, 
Uh, he was senior director of finance for the Greater New York Chapter of the American Red Cross. Under Paul's leadership, TIA has saved over $600,000 in overhead expenses. And uh, this is, we have to make sure we are spending your dues investment uh, wisely and making your money work efficiently for you. So Paul has helped us do just that. So these are the staff that are working harder to make your organization uh, better for you and the toy industry. And we're here to help shape and accomplish the goals and objectives that TIA's members set for us. And we thank you for your loyalty and your continuous support. <clears throat> but I really have to acknowledge the hard work of our volunteer leadership. In particular, I want to say a few words of tribute for our retiring board chairman, Brian Stockton. Brian is one of the finest executives I have ever had the privilege of working with in my 40-year management career. His good judgment, his extremely professional management, and confident leadership have helped TIA grow and prosper over the last two years, and Brian's the type of leader who will sit and listen throughout a meeting and then toward the end slice through all the points and counterpoints and summarize a clear path forward. I don't know how he does it. And I'm glad that we'll continue to have Brian's advice and counsel as an advisor to the board going forward. And I have to say that um, uh, I'm, I'm envious and I feel good about the staff there at Mattel because they've got a great leader. Um, so this is your association. Toy companies formed it. You own it. It exists only to serve your needs. And I hope you'll encourage any companies that are not members to become part of our effort. Uh, we need their input. We need their contributions. <laughs> and we need their moral support. So TIA is here to help them survive and thrive in this ever-changing environment of the toy business, and so I hope, hope you'll encourage them to join. So now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our Secretary Treasurer and soon-to-be Vice Chairman, John Gessert, CEO of American Plastic Toys, who will provide you with a financial report. John? Thank you, Carter, and good morning, everyone. I'm uh, pleased to say I've uh, met my first objective. I didn't fall off the back of the stage when I came over to provide my report. Um, our, our first slide um, is, uh, and we thought it would be helpful to do it in a graphical manner, uh, is a graphical representation of the um, uh, total operating revenue by source. And as everybody can see, uh, the blue section, American International Toy Fair, is uh, a, a big part of that at 63.5% or thereabouts. Coming in second is Gene's Group at membership at 22%, and uh, the Fall Toy Preview crept into third place at just over 13%. The second slide uh, does the same thing. It's a graphical representation of operating expenses as a, total of t uh, as a percentage total of uh, expenses. And you can see, uh, consistent with Carter's remarks, that the external affairs, our advocacy arm of the uh, TIA, has uh, shown some increases, you know, from the low 20s to over 25% in 2011. Otherwise, I think that if you look at Toy Fair, Fall Toy Preview, other program services and administration, it gives you a great idea of the, uh, the, the prudent management by Carter and the whole TIA staff as far as controlling expenses. And uh, uh, the bottom line results you'll see have been pretty impressive, especially for year-end 2011. And my final slide is uh, kind of a top-line review of uh, re revenues and expenses. Program revenues were up $678,000. Program exp expenses were down uh, almost $870,000. Supporting expenses up slightly, about $138,000. And then not operating income uh, was investment income. Our investment account made uh, uh, over $500,000 in 2011. So your uh, net increase, or your increase in net assets, pardon me, is uh, about $1.2 million. But really exciting is the total assets uh, year in 2011 compared to 2010 were up over uh, $2.2 million. Liabilities down over a half million dollars. So the uh, bottom line net assets uh, increased uh, to almost $2.8 million. And the real exciting aspect of this is that at year end 2011, uh, TIA has been able to move $2 million to our investment account, which gets us to the reserve amount that uh, Carter put on his slide of 65%, uh, essentially three years early. That was our goal to, to get us back onto a, what we felt was a solid ground uh, financially so that we could provide the services to the TIA membership. We wanted our reserve to hit 65% by 2015. We reached that goal, actually exceeded that goal by year end 2011. 
So that concludes my report. I think it's it's easy to report numbers like that, certainly, and uh, and happy to hand this uh, duty off to Mr. Hargraves. So thank you. Thank you, John. And now uh, to give a brief report on our the status of our advocacy initiatives, uh, here's uh, Ed Desmond, our EVP for External Affairs. Thank you, Carter. Good morning, everyone. Let me, um, here we go. Um, let me just start with just a quick overview of some of the accomplishments in the advocacy department since we uh, met here last year. Um, we're, again, pleased to report that after a very active year in the state and federal governments, uh, we're pleased to report that not a single harmful bill passed uh, that's going to negatively impact our toy company members. So we're very pleased to report that again this year, and that's something that we'll strive for again in 2012. As Carter alluded to, we were very active in passage of amendments to try to alleviate some of the burdens from the CPSIA that all of the companies have been dealing with for the past few years, and we're proud of some of those amendments uh, that we worked on. Uh, Joan Lawrence has continued to work uh, to revise uh, the ASTM standards, something that she's been doing at TIA for quite a while and continues uh, to, to uh, uh, build up accomplishments. And we've also begun to uh, uh, have additional projects and events for our members, such as California Day in Sacramento. We did for the first time last year. That was a big success. Coming out, uh, meeting with California legislators, talking about your companies, uh, your employees, your products, and making sure that they're aware when they consider legislation that might impact your companies, that they know you're there in their state and their district, and, uh, and that they're have consideration for what those uh, pieces of legislation might do for you. So those are a few of the things that have happened since we were here last year. Carter told you how great I am, and I can't even move this. Are you moving them back there? or Okay. There we go. You are? I am. Okay. Okay. Well, let's uh, move ahead, then, and we'll look at 2012. I'll just give you a brief overview of some of the issues that we're looking at. As Carter alluded to, we deal with both state, federal, legislators, but we're also increasingly dealing internationally. At the state level, there's a tremendous amount of uh, legislation aimed at your companies from regulating the chemicals and uh, other uh, resources you may use in your products to implementing uh, onerous take-back legislation that would require you to take back products at the end of the life cycle. We're also working in some key states where back in 2008 uh, harmful legislation passed uh, and are now being implemented, and we're trying to make sure that those implementing regulations uh, do not harm your companies. Uh, federal, federally, uh, the CPSIA is uh, beginning to be more of a memory. Uh, we're pretty much through the implementation phases, and we're now working on some of those amendments that passed last summer as they're implemented. But more and more, the CPSIA uh, is moving behind us. Uh, this is a political election year, so there are going to be some attacks on the industry uh, we're forecasting. A lot of the NGOs will look at uh, toxic toys and other environmental uh, issues that they can blame on the industry and target uh, uh, some of your products. So we're keeping an eye out for that. Marketing to children is another area where they'll look at uh, issues such as online advertising and what your companies might be doing with information that you get online about children. So there's a different, uh, couple of different sets of issues that we're beginning to look at uh, now that we do have a little bit of uh, additional resource capability with uh, the CPSIA moving behind us. Again, as I mentioned, internationally we are, con we are beginning to work more and more uh, with our colleagues at TIE, the Toy Industries of Europe, to make sure that we're uh, aware of and being as active as we can on issues in Europe. We're also dealing with some individual uh, country issues. It, it may be trying to uh, knock down trade barriers. Uh, or otherwise improve conditions in some of those countries for you to get your products in if that's places that you want to begin doing business. So those are just a, a real quick snapshot of some of the things at the state level and federally and internationally that we anticipate happening in 2012. Um, let me just spend a minute here, just a couple of ways that we think you can take more advantage of your membership as TIA members. Um, you know, we do a lot of committee work where we deal with some of these these issues that could really impact your companies. Uh, we have a state government affairs committee. We have a federal committee. Uh, we have a technical uh, environmental committee. So if you're a member of TIA or you're thinking about becoming a member of TIA, look into some of these committee uh, 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 opportunities for you. It's a chance for you to tell us about your companies, give us some information about how these bills impact you, to make sure that we're uh, doing all we can for, for our members. Um, we continue to provide comments to the CPSC on these remaining 
uh, CPSIA implementation issues, and, and constantly we're up dealing with members of Congress and state legislators to make sure they're aware of the, of the toy industry and our issues. Uh, the two events uh, that I mentioned earlier, uh, here's the dates. We hope you'll mark them down and try to come to, to both or at least one of those if you can. Uh, in April, we're going to have our second Sacramento Day uh, out in California, so we hope those of you who are California members uh, will think about participating. And then we'll have our federal fly-in in May as part of PlayCon. We're really excited about merging these two great events this year uh, in the Washington, D.C. area. So uh, we hope you'll consider coming and participating in those. It's a great opportunity for you to meet with your legislators and talk about your companies. Uh, the third area um, that we started a couple years ago that has really become an important component of our overall advocacy program is our political action committee. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to get uh, 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 strengthen our relationship with, with legislators and show our support uh, for their work in Congress or at the state level on issues that impact us and, and, and their support uh, for our issues. So there's uh, these prior approval forms uh, out on the desk out front. For those of you who have an interest in, in getting more involved in the PAC, we really encourage that. And as a first step, we hope you'll pick up one of these, uh, these forms and take a look at it and, and leave it with us. Um, there's my uh, uh, email, and uh, again, you know, let me close with this, that as part of your membership, in addition to this great show and some of the other member benefits, uh, what, what we'd like to say is that of all your comp competitors out there in the marketplace, there is nothing that can impact your business more than a policymaker who has you in their sights that, that tries to pass onerous legislation. So please get involved. Let us know how we can help your companies. If you're from a state where you hear about legislation, uh, please make sure that we're aware of it. Uh, and, and get in touch with us so that we can make sure that you know what's going on both at the state and federal level. So thanks a lot for your time this morning, and if there's any questions afterwards, uh, a bunch of us are around. We'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ed. It's, uh, now, Al Varecchia has been chairman of our nominating committee. Uh, unfortunately, he could not be here this morning, so it's my pleasure to introduce a member of the nominating committee, uh, Danny Grossman, who will do his Al Varecchia impression. <laughs> well, that's too tall an order, I'm afraid. Um, I, you know, John seems to think that this, this arrangement up here is random. I, I actually think we're echoing some of the games and toys we have out on the floor, and this one reminds me of Rush Hour from Think Fun, <laughs> trying to sync with those chairs so we don't go over the back, through the front, whatever. Um, so thanks for the inspiration, Andrew. Um, so it's a pleasure to represent, if not imitate, um, Alvarecchia. Uh, I am the immediate prior chair of the nomination, nominating committee, but continue to serve as a member, and I'm glad to present the committee's recommendations. Um, by way of background, for those of you who weren't uh, following at the time, in early January, Carter Keithley distributed to all members a package of materials um, about today's meeting, and included in that was a set of recommendations from the TIA's nomination committee regarding candidates for our board of directors. Uh, members were then invited to submit additional nominations for uh, two open board seats, which we have. Um, we did not receive nominations by January 30th, which is the deadline, um, and as such, a slate was uh, advanced and recommended by the nominating committee for two-year terms of office that will expire in 2014. So uh, we are very excited to advance as a nominating committee to you as recommendations our two new um, uh, nominees. They are uh, Julia Fitzgerald, who is the Chief Digital Marketing Officer for Toys and Sporting Goods at the Sears Holding Corporation, and Jeffrey Kennis, who is President of Enchanted Moments. So we're excited in particular because Julia and Jeff would become the first representatives of retailers and independent sales representatives, respectively, on the TIA board. I was coming over uh, today from the hotel in a taxi with a couple of um, sales reps who, uh, when they learned I was from TIA or, or involved in TIA, said, oh, we're not going to talk to you. And by the end of the taxi ride, I had them so uh, thoroughly charmed by the fact that today was an historic day that our uh, retailer uh, sales rep was going to be brought aboard uh, that uh, they paid for the taxi ride. How good was that? <laughs> it's pretty good. CTIA can be to your benefit, really. Um, <clears throat> so this, um, uh, this inclusion of retailers and sales reps is, was actually contemplated and approved in our bylaws change of a year ago. And it was a very deliberate move to become more inclusive as an association. 
um, to represent every wing of our industry, from inventors to manufacturers, from sales reps to retailers. Some of you may not know that we used to be called the Toy Manufacturers Association, or no, Toy Manufacturers of America, and we've moved now, and this, this represents another move toward greater inclusion um, in our industry. So uh, the nomination committee submits these two candidates for consideration by the TIA membership, and I would welcome a motion to approve them uh, to serve on the TIA board through 2014. Great. Is there a second? Thank you. Dramatic pause. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstaining? Fantastic. We're delighted to welcome both uh, Jeffrey and Julia. They're both seated here on the edge of the uh, aisle. Uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce the new board officers of the Toy Industry Association. These are sitting board members who, have, who will be assuming um, offices or have assumed offices um, on the TIA board. Um, the new bylaws also assign responsibility for electing officers of the association to the board itself. So that's something we're not approving today, but announcing. At its meeting this past weekend, the board approved the new leadership for the coming year, and it's my pleasure to introduce them to you. Uh, as chairman of the board, Soren Torp Larsen from Lego, President of Lego Systems. Vice Chairman of the Board, John Gessert, who spoke a moment ago, President and CEO of Amer American Plastic Toys. Secretary Treasurer of the Board, David Hargraves, who's the Chief Oper Operating Officer at Hasbro. And as members of the Executive Committee joining those three, Bob Wan, CEO of Patch Products, and Chuck Scotham, General Manager and Senior Vice President of Mattel Digital Network. It's a great uh, Executive Committee, and I know they will serve us well. So um, with that, uh, that concludes the nominating report, and thank you for your attention. And it's now my pleasure to introduce our retiring board chairman, Brian Stockton. Maybe departing chairman instead of retiring. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not feeling quite that old this morning. Thank you, Carter, and good morning, all. Uh, uh, with our two new board members, we also want to recognize uh, two people who have uh, given a lot of service to the uh, TIA and the board, and uh, we want to wish them very well. The first is Leanne Brodsky. Leanne joined the board in 2010 as a representative of uh, Nickelodeon Consumer Products. Uh, unfortunately, she isn't able to be with us uh, this morning, but we did uh, present her a token of our gratitude for her service at our board meeting uh, last Saturday. So we will miss Leanne uh, very much as she uh, moves on. The second person we want to recognize this morning is Arnie Rubin, who is in fact retiring as a member of the advisory uh, committee to the board. Uh, the way that the advisory committee works is that the three most recent board chairs sit on this committee. So technically, I'm pushing Arnie off the chair and out of the TIA. So <laughs> you're welcome, Arnie. <laughs> but I am, am going to make it up because I think we have a plaque we for do. Mr. Rubin right here. So Arnie, if you could please come up. Or I'll come down. How's that? Well, it seems like it was uh, just a very short time ago that I stood at this meeting to receive the, uh, the gavel as chair from Alvarecchia. And in a few short minutes, I'll be doing the same and retiring as my role at the TIA chair and pass the gavel on to my, my friend Soren Torp Larson of Lego. And I'm very confident that he and the team are going to do a fantastic job, and I can't wait to see what exciting changes they bring to the TIA. But uh, before I turn the reins over to uh, Soren, I do want to take a quick look back on the last two years of what this uh, great group of people have been able to do. And clearly, this association has changed a lot as witnessed by the addition of uh, uh, a retailer and an independent sales rep. First of all, I'm really happy with the numbers that John Gessert uh, just reported in the Treasurer's report uh, just a minute ago. We exceeded our timeline for restoring the TIA's reserves, and we're now back on track 
financially. And the great news is, since we're back on track, we can begin to reinvest back into membership and to all the great programs that TIA can do. And I know they'll come up with some new ones that will be even better. Now, secondly, I think one of the things that we're very proud of as an industry is if you look at what's happened to the toy industry over the past five or six years, you know, the industry actually is about 5% larger than it was before the crisis. And that's despite the commodity costs that we all face being up about 30%. And the only way that that math can work is if the innovation in this industry continues. So I think as an industry, we should be very proud of what we've done because the performance of the industry has been particularly outstanding relative to other categories that our retail customers are dealing with. So I really feel good about the, the health of the industry. I think it's also inspiring to be a part of an industry that's very forward-looking because this toy industry is, in fact, diversifying and diversifying quite nicely. You know, there's an enhanced use of technology across the board and all sorts of products. There's a constant influx of new and innovative playthings coming from companies of all sizes, from big ones, medium-sized, small ones, and all over the world. And there are many manufacturers that are in new categories or expanding their lines in ways that no one ever thought plausible just a few short years ago. The Industry Association, the TIA, has been keeping pace with these rapid changes. Uh, in fact, I would say the TIA has been at the forefront of many of these changes. We're solidly positioned as the global leader in the area of toy safety and efforts to enhance and harmonize the toy safety standards used around the world, and that's important to all of us. Here in the U.S., toys, re toys remain consistently ranked amongst the safest consumer goods that can be found in home. And building on this foundation of safety, the TIA's growing external affairs team has helped to establish a voice for the industry, both in the nation's capital and in state capitals all across this country. The industry's advocacy efforts are proactive measures designed to demonstrate two very important points. Number one is our industry commitment to the well-being of our very young customers who we treasure and our contributions to economic growth because this is an important industry to the economy of the United States. In fact, in the U.S. alone, the business of toys and games generates an economic impact of nearly $81 billion and more than half a million jobs. So it's quite substantial. So whether we're talking about product safety, marketing to children, the safe and fair treatment of workers or other areas of our businesses, the toy industry has a lot of positive information to share. Our go-to market events, the Toy Fair here and the Dallas uh, Fall Toy Preview continue to be the bedrock of the TIA's annual revenue stream. Both shows are making money and increasing momentum. In fact, with the skyrocketing participation of international attendees, both shows are carrying a broad array of toy companies forwarding forward into an expanding global network of vendor-seller relationships. Similarly, the TIA's membership is also growing. In fact, we're now at over 550 members, which is quite an accomplishment. A year ago, the TIA's membership approved a new set of bylaws that expanded our organization to include licensors, retailers, manufacturers, reps, and others. And one moment ago, we welcomed to our board two directors who are from these kind of categories, Julie Fitzgerald, representing the retail community, and Jeffrey Kennis, representing manufacturers' reps. But Julia and Jeff alone cannot represent their categories and, and views. We need more people to be participating from these areas and to broaden the scope of the TIA and be even more inclusive. Every one of these groups needs to be included and be recognized in the association and understand the value and contributions that they can make, both as a member and hopefully a member of the board. So as our membership grows, the strength of the TIA will also grow. A strong association will generate a significant return to every invested dollar that you as members give to this organization to support this industry. Now, my experience as the chair has been a very rewarding one. Uh, it's been a fantastic nine years participating with the TIA board, uh, the last two in particular as the chair. I particularly want to thank the support of all TIA members uh, throughout the world who have been uh, very generous in their support of the organization. I want to thank the TIA staff who does such an incredible job across all fronts. Uh, I can't tell you the quality of people we have is just spectacular and we can be very proud. I also want to thank Carter Keithley. Carter's done a fantastic job of taking this organization just seven short years ago from 
a bit of a state of disarray to now, I would call it a well-oiled machine. So thank you very much, Carter. You, you two have been a pleasure to work with. I want to thank the board of directors. We have a great board of directors, uh, many who I call friends now. Uh, they're very supportive. They really think about this industry, and we are blessed to have such a great group of people. And I particularly want to thank the uh, executive committee who I had the pleasure of working with over the past two years with uh, Jamie and John and Soren and David Hargraves, uh, just a bunch of really hardworking, dedicated people who, frankly, made my job a whole lot easier. So I want to thank them all very much for all their work and contributions. So now I guess it's time to make the big pass, Soren. <laughs> Uh, I have great confidence in Soren. He and I have worked together for many, many years on many committees. He's an outstanding leader of his own organization, but he really will be a terrific leader for the TIA. So, Soren, if you would please join me at the podium. No? Sorry. On behalf of the 550 members of the TIA, I'm going to present this gavel to you. The chair is yours, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brian, and good morning to everyone. Uh, I'd like to start by again uh, congratulating Brian on his many accomplishments as a chair. Uh, as you've heard this morning, under his uh, leadership of the TIA, uh, we have finished two very, very strong years and are in a very strong position as an association. Increased membership has helped to restore our fiscal health, uh, as you heard from John early on, uh, and with a strong and talented staff of the TIA Association. Uh, we have improved our capacity to advocate uh, on behalf of the industry and engage our stakeholders uh, both here in the U.S. and abroad, um, as you heard from Ed earlier. Uh, I'm honored uh, and humbled to accept this leadership role, and I hope to build on the success uh, of what Brian hands over to me. I believe this industry is about great products, great people, and great passion. Uh, I know for a fact that in the TIA we have great people and great passion, uh, and then I'm sure our members will also bring uh, great products, and therefore I think we have a bright, a bright pre uh, future ahead of us. Uh, TIA is clearly uh, poised to become an organization who reaches an influence, whose, whose uh, influence reaches way beyond uh, the borders uh, of North America. This year's Toy Fair, which is welcoming an unparalleled surge in international visitors, has solidified TIA's position as an important conduit for the worldwide toy market. As an association, we are already leaders in the area of toy safety standards and regulations. Our continued efforts to align these requirements on a worldwide scale helps to ensure that toy companies can develop safe toys and new products and expand markets with ease. Expanding beyond the scope of toys, TIA has recently been invited to serve on a committee of international experts uh, who will work to revise global guidelines for child safety across many product categories. TIA has also enhanced the visibility of our dynamic industry uh, on the world media stage, promoting our great safety records, businesses, and philanthropic efforts towards children. We are also on the cusp of assuming a global leadership role in a fast-evolving area of marketing to children, environmental sustainability, uh, and corporate social responsibility. But what do we have to do to take it to the next level? Uh, only with sound and forward-looking strategic plans, uh, capable and talented staff, as you've heard about several times this morning, can we truly benefit uh, our members, stakeholders uh, here in the U.S. and abroad, uh, and the toy industry uh, as a whole. Strategic planning is all about looking ahead, uh, and although we're wrapping up our current plan uh, by end of this year, uh, as an organization, we have a view into the future. We've already embarked upon the development of our next plan and have established a longer-term vision. We've challenged the staff of TIA uh, to look at where we want, not, not, where, where we, not only where we want to be in three years' time, but also where we want to be over the next ten years. A vision will guide our plans and the plans will guide our decisions. We'll build on the successes that you heard about this morning and capitalize on the accomplishment uh, and build upon the input coming from our growing membership base and the ever-expanding uh, group of people with interest in our industry. Many of us in this room are manufacturers, uh, and as we all know, our goal is to streamline our processes and to do more with less 
uh, by introducing efficiencies. As an association, resources are really all about people and passion. Carter has introduced a, a TIA senior staff in his remarks this morning. Um, thanks to new structure and educational components, we've developed a bench strength of very capable senior executives who can now effectively adapt to the changing needs of the TIA members and the global toy business. We must continue to invest uh, in them and develop their skills for stronger and more robust team uh, to the benefit of the industry. Our staff will continue to network with members to gather their input and look forward to working with you guys uh, to make TIA as strong as possible for the toy, games, and plaything industry in our own cities and towns across the America and overseas. So with that, I will uh, once again thank Brian and congratulating on his retirement, um, or whatever you called it. <laughs> um, I thank our staff uh, for another great year, um, which I'm very impressed with. Uh, Mary Ann and her team for another great show. I think this has been a very, very successful show uh, so far. Um, and of course, uh, thank all our members for continued support to this great association. So I believe if there's no further business, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to open it up for questions, uh, but if there's no... Uh, oh, for questions? Sure. Or comments? Otherwise... Um, we have a presentation for we have a presentation for Brian, okay. Yes, Brian. <laughs> Brian, I think a lot of uh, nice words have already been said this morning. Uh, so uh, as, uh, as the guy who takes over the gavel from you, I'd like to personally thank you for your leadership and your contribution thank to you the GIA. So, so thank congratulations. You thank you. Well, if there's no further business, uh, let's bring this annual business meeting to a close. Carter's nodding, so that means uh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I hope you'll all be able to stay and welcome our keynote speaker, uh, Ines Tannenbaum, chairman of the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, to kick off uh, the annual Toy Safety Compliance Seminar. And thank you very much for coming. This meeting is now adjourned.